Hey everybody, it's Coach Deb here. Um, today I'd like to spend a little time talking about um, how to develop more self-compassion. And the reason this is important, well, there are a lot of reasons why it's important to be compassionate to yourself. But I think when we're compassionate with ourselves, we're more likely to be compassionate with everybody else. Um, and uh, let's face it, um, when, when we're feeling at peace, that's when we're at our best. So bear with me, I've got a lot of notes because I want to make sure that I kind of walk you through this in an order that makes sense. So to, to start the discussion about self-compassion, I think it's important to talk about its opposite, which is um, self criticism. And, you know, I think we're all probably familiar with that voice in our head that talks to us when we mess up. So it, the idea is there are two ways we can talk to ourselves when we are confronted with <laughs> examples of our, of our weakness or our humanity, right? You know, we all are human. We all make mistakes. So do we continue listening to that inner critic and where does that get us or do we try to develop some self-compassion so when we listen to the inner critic that eventually leads us to self-neglect and again i'm going to expound on that um, and when we listen to or develop compassionate self-talk that actually leads us to self-care. And when we take good care of ourselves, we're also capable of taking good care of others. So I wanna talk about that voice in our head, the, uh, the not so friendly voice, the self-critic. So to give you some examples of what that voice sounds like, um, things like, well, what's wrong with me? How did I let that happen? Why me? I can't do anything right. If I keep on like this, I'm going to crash and burn. I'm going to fail. I'm a fool. A little kid could do this better. And you wonder why you don't succeed. So those are examples of the inner critic in action. So the inner critic will blame you when things go wrong, call you names, um, fool, weak, unattractive, compare you to other people. This is a big one. Um, and of course, you're always going to fall short when the inner critic is comparing you to other people. Everybody else does it better, looks better, has a better life, on and on and on. Uh, the inner critic will also set high or uh, impossible standards of perfection. And interestingly, the inner critic is really only interested in your weaknesses and failures. It never uh, talks to you about your accomplishments or your strengths. And the inner critic will exaggerate and then generalize your weakness. So in other words, uh, if I mess up on this YouTube recording, that means I will be a complete failure as a coach. That's an example of a generalization that my inner critic might, might be telling me right now. So in extreme cases where the inner critic just you know, is completely unchecked uh, and self-neglect happens that can also uh, lead to self-harm. So that's one of the reasons why this is real important to kind of get a grip on. So let me take you through a few examples of um, what the inner critic is gonna do with like a, a certain situation. So. Let's say at work you have a, a performance evaluation that you're not too happy with. You know, where some of your maybe 
weaknesses are pointed out. So that makes you feel stress. And what you really need when you're under that kind of stress is rest. Your inner critic is going to tell you something along the lines of, I'm a failure. And the self-neglect will kick in. And an example, you may work even harder. In other words, you're not going to get the rest that you need. So here's another example of how the inner critic might talk to you. Let's say you're trying to quit smoking and you know, you've been doing great, but you have a, a relapse. So you're going to feel maybe inadequate. And what you need when you're feeling inadequate is to feel competent. However, your inner critic is going to make you feel the opposite. I'm weak. I can't do this. I'll never succeed. And then the self neglect will kick in and you'll continue to smoke. And one more example would be um, let's say that you uh, are rejected by somebody that you're interested in. And that will make you feel isolated, among other things. What you really need in that situation is relatedness or connection with another human being. The thoughts that your inner critic is going to emphasize would be things along the lines of, I'm not worth anybody bothering with me. Why would anyone want to have a relationship with me? And then the self-neglect portion that follows from that would be further isolation. Now, let's get to the nicer voice that we can learn to develop. So self-compassion really has um, three components. It would be self-kindness versus self-judgment, a sense of common humanity instead of isolation. In other words, I'm not the only one who screws up. You know, mistakes are common. I'm human, everybody makes them. And then mindfulness versus over-identification. And what that means to me, how would I explain that is just, you're paying attention to that thought, but you're not letting it rule you. It's like, okay, you know, this weakness, this failure is telling me something. I'm going to look at it and maybe be curious about it instead of identifying with being a failure or being rejected, that type of thing. So your self kindness or self-compassionate voice is going to be caring and understanding of you when your humanity shows up. So in other words, you're not going to feel attacked. You're not going to feel blamed or shamed or you should have done that or you should have done this. A self-compassionate response is going to sound very different. So a self-compassionate voice uh, will say things like, well, I tried my best. I'm a human being, just like everybody else. I never signed up to be perfect. I never guaranteed that I'm going to be perfect. I've learned something from this situation. Next time, I'm going to do it differently. So you see the difference. It's like, there's not that heavy judgment that's personal involved in it. It's just, well, you know, you are a human being and yeah, that maybe wasn't your best move. And you know what? You can move on from that and learn from it. So what are the characteristics of a self-compassionate voice? Uh, Self-compassionate voice understands that you're not perfect. It helps you stop and take care of yourself first instead of solving the problem. So it, you're tending more to your emotional needs instead of going into how do I make this better way. It 
kind of gives you that feeling like, well, I'm just like everybody else, you know, it, it, there's a, that common humanity component to it. A self-compassionate voice is accepting of you even when you make mistakes. And your self-compassionate voice actually really does care about your well-being. So again, I want to take you through those same scenarios um, and show you the difference of what self-compassion is like in actual situations. So the negative performance evaluation that you have at work, you're still going to feel that stress and you're still going to need rest. The thought that the self-compassionate voice will have for you is, well, you know, I've tried my best and I guess I have some things to learn and I can do better. And then the self-care that follows will be actually getting the rest that you need. And then in the example we talked about where you're trying to quit smoking and you have a relapse, you still may have feelings of inadequacy. You still have the same need to feel competent, but your thoughts are more along the lines of, well, failure is human. Next time I'm gonna try again and I'll do better. And then the self-care that follows is creating a different plan to quit smoking. And in the final example, when you are in a situation where you're rejected by someone that you care about, you're still going to feel isolated. You're still going to need that relatedness, that connection. The voice in your head, the self-compassionate voice will say, well, everybody gets rejected. I guess it's just my turn. And then the self-care that follows could look like calling a friend to commiserate or uh, get together and hang out. So there's a whole lot more that can be said along the subject. Um, I intend to um, create some content for you on what good self-care is all about, but I kind of wanted you to have that um, background of where it originates really. Uh, and, you know, again, it's so much of an inside job. And if we realize that we're kind of letting our inner critic rule, that that's going to lead to self-neglect. And if our goal is to have better self-care, we need to try and develop a more self-compassionate attitude. So those are the basics. I hope you got something out of this video today. Thank you for watching. Stay well. Be safe. Take care.